Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station and I have an interesting topic today, uh, hopefully a pretty quick one, but it's about RGB and PBR validation for when you need to get something into an engine. So say you've textured this asset, which I've textured this one. Uh, it's available in the 3D Artist Coloring Book, by the way, so you can go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but how do you know that when you, that you've put in the correct values of this asset and of the color and of the base of the roughness to make sure that it's actually gonna look the exact same as it is here in your engine. There is actually a way to check and that is with the PBR validate filter or I guess you'd call it a filter. Now I've got two here and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to download it as well. So what you can do is basically once you've downloaded the file and I'll prov provide the file for you, all you have to do is let's go to my downloads and you can see I've got the PBR validate it'll download as an SBSAR all you have to do drag and drop it and then it's gonna create the import file and then you can put it in as I typically put it in as a filter just to keep it organized and then you can import it so then it'll appear down here now let me quickly explain something to you guys about um, PBR and PBR validation and why it is important so Basically, it's how do, how do I explain this? Physically based rendering is, it's, it's a method of shading and rendering that provides a more accurate representation of how light interacts with surfaces. Uh, so basically, I'm actually taking a lot of this from an 80 level article as well, so I'll leave a link in the description. PBR basically removes the guesswork of certain aspects of material creation, such as specularity, which is used based you know, on physically accurate formulas. The material will also look at accurate lighting in all, or accurate in all lighting simulations and allow for like basically a consistent workflow for the artist. So this is why PBR validate is so important. So we're basically just gonna focus on base color PBR validation today because you can get into roughness, reflectivity and, and metallic and stuff, but I basically am only using base color in this material, so I'll, I'll, I'll just give you an example. So let me explain how base color PBR validation works. So the base color map dictates the color for the material, and when working with PBR in Substance Painter, there are a few rules we have to follow to ensure this texture is as accurate as possible. One main rule is that the base color should not have any lighting information in it, period. We want this material to render properly in any environment. So if any lighting were to be baked into the base color, it would render incorrectly in different environments, hence PBR validation. Uh, another rule, rule we should probably follow is the base color shouldn't be too dark or too light. Just like in the real world, nothing is absolute black or white. So the same must be the same for this texture. Great, so that's the basic understanding. Basically, it's just a set of rules that you have to follow to make sure that your workflow stays con consistent when you move it to another engine. So just to just to recap real quick, base color should have no lighting information, okay? Number one, dark values should not be lower than a certain value, which is technically 30 sRGB, which is the tolerant range, or 50 sRGB, which is the strict range. Uh, bright values should also not be higher than 240 sRGB. So if you guys are wondering what sRGB is, um, sRGB, basically stands for standard red, green, blue. It's an RGB color space that HP and Microsoft created in about 1996 to use on mic on monitors, printers, and, and the internet. So it's basically a standardization of color that everyone should go by. And that's exactly what sRGB is. I think I have an image I can pull up just to show you guys exactly what we're talking about. Let's see if I can open it up here. Okay. So here is the sRGB range. So this um, this small triangle right in here, all of your values should technically fall within this range. And I believe Adobe updated it at a certain point. Okay, anyway, so for the long introduction, um, I had to explain it, but basically now you guys have a somewhat decent understanding of how it works. Awesome. So let's actually move into creating or getting the PBR validator in there and seeing if we can get this piece a little closer to make sure that it's PBR validated. So all you have to do is take your PBR validate 
from here and drag it up. Now, oh, that actually looks pretty good. So mine's pretty good so far. Uh, before we get going, let's just mention that um, this one, the PBR validate tool for Substance Painter was originally created by Wes McDermott of the Substance Painter team, so credit to him. And then this one I'm using was actually updated for Substance Alchemist, Substance Painter 2019 by Hibiki Entertainment, and I'll leave a link to them as well. So credit goes to them. I did not make this. Okay, great. So you drag it to the top of the stack, and it's basically going to mean green is good, red is bad. So you can see there's some values here in and around the shadows that probably need to be worked on a little bit. And I'm going to guess that these values are just a little bit too dark. So this will be a pretty easy example. So what you can do is you can turn it off and you can see, yeah, indeed, these are basically pure black. And since pure black doesn't really exist in the real world, we know that this maybe need to be needs to be brightened a little bit. So how do we isolate this to know what is causing the problem? Basically, you can go down into the I know it's wood, right? So we can go at down into the wood folder and you can start taking off and adding, unclicking, clicking layers that don't really work. So it's obviously the dirt filter right here. So this obviously has a sRGB value that is much too low for PBR validation and most game engines. So uh, you have a few options. You could remove it, I guess, or we can mess with the base color values to try and make it a little more realistic. So you can see I put this as pure black initially. So all you do is you bring it up a little bit. Don't have to go too high, but there we go. So basically that is pretty much cleaned out. You turn it off and that is a little more acceptable. Now there's a bit of balancing problem because we've lost some of the ambient occlusion. So let's bring it down a little bit and pop it back on. Let's see how low we can get it before the red really starts to kick in. And that's pretty much as far as we can go. So there we go. That's a nice little tweak. And it is now PBR validated. There are little pieces in here on the actual dark metal. Maybe we can fix those up. It might just be the overall, um, might just be the overall, let's see, is it in the handle? Maybe it's in the light. Oh, maybe it's, I'm assuming it's in the dark. Let's see if we can change it. I don't think there's anything we can do about this one because this is probably the ambient occlusion that's actually baked into the texture. And maybe we can confirm that by removing. Yeah, so that's actually the ambient occlusion map itself. So I removed that and everything seems to be all good and validated. So I wouldn't recommend it. You can obviously use a filter. Um, I would use a filter just to drop the values a little bit. And for this, again, this is going to be the same problem for the wood, most likely, or sorry, the handle. Um, most likely that the dirt that I've used is a pure black again. So we need to lighten this just a little bit. Let's up the value and we're done. And overall, that looks pretty good to me. You can have a little few pieces here and there that are a little too dark to me. That's okay. And just like that, we've barely changed the material, barely changed it. And now we have our asset, which is fully, I mean, 99% PBR validated. Uh, so that's it. Again, I will leave a link. If you want to download this yourself, if uh, I, I highly recommend you downloading this, I'll leave a link in the description where you can grab it. Um, if you are serious about getting this into one engine, like if you're creating a substance painter and you're going to move it to Unreal Engine, UE4, whatever, Unity, I would highly suggest using this before you move it over into anything else. Uh, this is so basically that you remain consistent and the material doesn't change really from engine to engine, at least not too dramatically. It always will look a little different. So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really like doing these quick little videos to show you these fun little useful tools. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like the videos, I do these very consistently. So make sure you subscribe, give us a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.